So my name's Richard and I'm Global Tactical Manager here at Volac Wilmar Feed Ingredients. And welcome to our next episode in the Why Feed Fat series. And in this episode, we'll be looking at how we can use rumen protected fats to reduce methane production in dairy cows. Methane is a really hot topic when we're looking at greenhouse gases on, on dairy farms. So from both an environmental perspective and an animal nutrition perspective, it's really important that we look to how we can take mitigating measures to reduce methane production. So from an environmental perspective, we know that methane has a global warming potential of about 30 times higher than that of carbon dioxide. So a real negative effect on global warming. But from the dairy cow perspective, we know that around 68% of the energy consumed by the dairy cow will be lost as methane. So that's a real direct energy loss of the diet energy. So if we're able to take measures to reduce methane production, then we can save that energy, which can be used for productive purposes, such as more milk, more milk solids, body condition, or to help cow fertility. In the dairy cow, methane is primarily produced due to the fermentation of fibre in the rumen. So as we get more and more fibre in the ration, that will be fermented to acetate and butyrate, which will lead to an increases in methane production. So if we had lower fibre diets, then we would generate more propionate as the volatile fatty acid, which actually will reduce the, the proportion of methane produced. So we need to be really careful in terms of our balance of our fibre and starch in the ration. Higher fibre rations will generate more methane, higher starch diets will generate less, but we need to be really careful then in terms of, uh, in terms of the fiber balance and starch balance that we don't lead to issues of acidosis caused by high starch rations and similarly low milk fats because we've got high starch and low fat. With fibre being the main source of generation of methane in the rumen, we could look to simply reduce the proportion of fibre in the ration. However, we need to be really careful with reducing fibre in the ration as we could end up with having negative effects on productivity, in particular in terms of rumen health in relation to acidosis or the effect on low milk fat, for example. So really important as we try to tackle methane reduction, we don't do it in a negative way that will have a negative effect on other aspects of cow health or production. So we want to maintain fibre level to ensure we have rumen health and we ensure we, we are able to produce maximum levels of milk fat, but we don't want to exceed the level of starch in the ration where we will have a negative effect on rumen function, particularly the big risk of increasing risk of acidosis. So another way we can reduce methane production in dairy cows for you through dietary means is to increase the proportion of rumen protected fat in diets. So the key difference between rumen protected fats and other ingredients we will have in the diet is that rumen protected fats are not fermentable. So really, if we don't have the fermentation in the rumen, we will not generate methane. So that's the unique aspect of, of fat uh, as an ingredient, it will not lead to the generation of methane. So the key difference when we're looking at individual ingredients and trying to produce a balanced diet, which will not only reduce methane, but also give us the productivity benefits, is that rumen protected fats will increase the energy density of the ration to supply more energy for milk yield, milk fat, body condition, cow fertility. But crucially, unlike all the other materials, they will not be fermented in the rumen. They will not lead to the generation of methane. So we get higher productivity, we get lower methane, and we get a much more efficient, much more efficient diets.
Folak Wilmar, I've just completed a fairly extensive project over at Cornell University in the USA. And in that study, we looked at different types of rumen protected fats, which was the Megalac, the calcium salt supplement, and a high C16, high palmitic acid product. And we fed those at different levels of inclusion in the diet. So a 0%, a 1.5, or a 3% inclusion on a dry matter basis of the rumen protected fat. And in simple terms, or in summary for the project, we increased milk yield by over three liters per cow per day with the Megalac supplement. And when we looked at the methane production, we reduced methane by over 6% uh, methane per day in, at the highest level of rumen protected fat inclusion. But when you look at that on a milk, milk production basis, we found that milk, uh, methane was reduced by over 15% per liter of milk. So that's it for this episode of our Why Feed Fat series, but please join in for the next episode where we'll be looking at how we can use the Volak Wilmer Fat Calculator to determine how much fat we should be feeding to our dairy cows.